Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Dominus S in depth. Uh, thank you so much to all of you for joining us tonight for this special episode of In Depth uh, on um, Saint John Paul the Great. Uh, as you all know, today is his feast day, um, and uh, that is why we decided that even if um, in depth has usually been about um, the missions. Uh, our past episodes of in depth has been about the missions. We decided that today it, we would be remiss if we didn't have a special on Saint Pope John Paul uh, the Great tonight. Um, so for those of you who are tuning in for the first time tonight, Dominus S is a good news, good vibes website. Um, that seeks to help our followers as well as ourselves grow deeper in the faith. And I'm Margo Salcedo, the Editor-in-Chief of Dominus S, and we have with us a familiar face, the founding priest of Dominus S, Father Jason Laguerta. Father? Yeah? Would you Margo, do the honor of welcoming our amazing guest tonight? Yeah, happy feast day. Um, uh, saint John Paul II is considered as the uh, patron saint of new evangelization. That's why we are featuring him tonight. Yes, and we are so honored because tonight we have three very, very special guests who have personally met Saint Pope John Paul II. Um, and by by met, um, we don't mean just waving at him um, from afar or being there in St. Peter's um, in St. Peter's Basilica uh, or St. Peter's Square and masusulya pan lang siya. No. Um, they have actually made mano. Yung, yung isa sa kanila, inakbayan pa. Um, talagang vibes. Vibes na vibes po talaga sila ni Pope John Paul. So, um, I, I'm I'm just wondering if I will introduce them um, by age or if I will introduce them in alphabetical order. <laughs> so tonight uh, we have with us um, Father uh, Joel Hasson, pa parish priest of Mary Mayor of Justice Parish in Makati, um, as well as. Um, Father uh, Benny Tuason, who is the parish priest of St. Anthony de Padua in Singalong. And um, today we have the parish priest of St. John Paul II Parish, uh, Father Arias Season. So later on, we'll get to know them better and their experiences with um, St. Pope John Paul II. So, Father Jason, are we going to do it by, by age or by looks or <laughs> paano ba? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Siguro we'll start with yeah. letter A. <laughs> so let's start, let's start with Father Arias. Father yeah, Arias. the Paris priest. <laughs> Because, yes, because he is the parish priest of uh -huh. St. John Paul II Parish. So, Father Arias, um, I actually uh, did a little uh, video stalking of you earlier. And I saw your <laughs> interview with Susan Enriquez. And um, dun po sa interview din yo, nakita ko po talaga you were very, very close to uh, Pope John Paul during not only one but two of his visits to the Philippines. Father Aris? Yeah. Um, and yon, uh, 1995? No, first of all, 1991, uh, when he came for the first time for the beatification of uh, Lorenzo Service. Ruiz and Companion Martyrs, um, I was in second year philosophy in the seminary. And um, I was... I was chosen to hold the book for him during the beatification of Lorenzo. So, but let me let me go back a little bit, you know, um, kasi si, si John Paul really played an important part in my life as a, uh, as a priest. Kasi he became Pope when I was discerning. I was in high school. I was in high school when he became Pope. And he came at that time na, I was discerning kung papasok ako ng seminaryo o hindi. And then, so I, I, I saw him, I 
So, he has been inspiring me since that time. So, from the time I was, he became Pope, tapos nandito siya, and I was a second year seminarian. I think I was 19 years old. Talagang I was just in awe. Um, I couldn't say a word. I couldn't say a word. Talagang nakatitig lang ako sa kanya the whole time. Hindi ako nakapagmano eh. So, hindi ako makapagmano sa kanya kasi na, nahihiya. I was in awe. And Our of stuff. course, in, yeah, uh, in 1995, it was a totally different experience. So, um, I was, I just came back from Rome in 1992. Uh, I finished social communication sciences. So, I was working with the media coverage of, uh, of the Pope's visit in 1995. And, um, to my surprise, before he before he arrived at the PICC, sabi sa akin ng protocol officer, Father Aris, come with me. You will welcome the Holy Father. Wala sa plano yon. Wala sa plano yon. Wala sa plano yon. Then when he came down the Pope Mobile, sa PICC, Cardinal Chivish got his cane, took my hand, and put his hand on mine. So the whole afternoon, the whole afternoon, akay ko siya. Wow. Akay ko siya. Ibang Ay, klase wow. yun. Ibang klase yung experience na yun. So kung 1981, 1981, I couldn't say a word. In 95, it was a totally different experience. I remember he was trying, he was, he speaks many languages. Um, he was talking to me in English, but I felt he was exerting effort. So after two, three sentences, I talked to him in Italian. And no. that started it. So that whole, the whole thing, the whole time we were chatting and I, I felt so at home with him. I felt so at home with him. Uh, it was like talking to, to my grandfather. This was in 1991. I, 95 when he came the last time. So, um, so, so two experiences po. But the first one, you were no. very, very young pa po, di ba? Yeah. yeah. I was not yet a priest. I was a seminarian. Hmm. And um, do you remember, I mean, do you remember what he said to you? Uh, he didn't say anything. All I remember, I re what I remember from that event from him was, he held me. He held me and it was, because um, I was holding the book for him, he held me telling me to kneel down. And I remember that grip. I, it was a, he's a sportsman, so it was a very firm grip. And when I held him in 95, um, honestly, I was sad because in 95, I think, um, May Parkinson's na siya eh. So, nanginginig na yung kamay niya nun. So, yun. Um, that was a little bit sad kasi magkaibang, ibang-iba yung dalawang hawak na yun. Uh, ang, ang impression ko po is that he, um, he really felt the love of um, Filipinos um, when everybody gathered. Um, it's said to be yes. the largest Christian gathering in history and he even promised to come back and um, <laughs> I remember when the relic arrived uh, last year uh, it was a kind of like a symbol of him coming back mm -hmm. yeah um, uh, we generated the biggest crowd in a PayPal event um, depending on who who's making who's giving the statistics I think Japanese Japanese television estimated it at 9 million. Eh. Yung Luneta crowd, yung closing mass ng World Youth Day. Wow. That, was really, that was really, that was really something else. Wow. It was, it's really the biggest gathering. The biggest Kala ko 5 gathering. million lang po, but it's 9 million pala. As, as I said, it depends on who's talking. But um, <laughs> uh, remember, so I was... Uh, I was in the I was in the OB van. I remember I was in the OB van during the coverage because I was seated beside the director. So the the 
the estimate of of uh, Nippon Television was nine million something, yeah. whatever it is. But when I am asked to describe, because I, I I saw the shots, so it was it was the grandstand all the way to Taft Avenue, Agrippina Circle, all the way to Pedro Hill. Punung puno ng tao yon. I I remember that very well. Gosh, okay. Kasi po, ano eh, um, 1998 ako pinanganak eh. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> so, oh, sige po. So, si Father Zendi also um, had encounters with uh, St. Pope John Paul II. Yeah. Kayo naman po, Father Benny, what, what, what are your memories of, uh, yeah. of being with St. John Paul? Actually, I had I had the benefit of meeting him twice in the same year, 1995. Uh, that was yung yung sinasabi ni yung first yung yung sa yung visit niya sa Manila, and uh, yung I was then a formator sa Holy Apostle Seminary, and there was a news that he's going to visit the seminary, so yung complex no, but uh, there was I think there was nothing certain about it. Anyway, we were pre nag prepare kami, uh, all the preparations, security, and everything, paparong gagawin, and everything. Ganon. So, actually, we don't know where he will be, when he will be coming in, or uh, what he's going to do. So, alam mo naman, pagkaganyang mga VIP secretaries, uh, yung mga schedule nag nagbabago anytime. So, anyway, one, I remember one specific. Uh, uh, change that was made uh, dun sa complex yung ano uh, yung nung sigurado nang pupunta siya dun sa LMI ano mong ginawa nila yung Bishop Yalong was then the rector uh, yung steps ng uh, entrance sa LMI ginawa nilang ano parang mas maliit not the usual size no i think they were they did that because uh, the pope then was not uh, uh, parang they want to uh, be sure make that the Pope can, for him. Yeah, make it convenient. Ganon. Parang ang tawag ng Prince Steps or whatever. Sen senorita. The, the use uh, senorita. Senorita okay. Steps. Yeah. yeah. So, so nangyari, uh, we, we met him uh, doon sa, I think sa Aris was also there, doon sa entrance ng San Carlos in front of the chapel. And then, isa-isa yun. I don't know kung nasan si Aris doon, pero I was... I was about siguro mga 7th or 8th or 9th priest pa no. Doon pa lang sa ano, doon pa lang sa unang priest nung, nung suddenly nag-appear siya, nakita ko siya. My god, yung feeling ko talaga yung para bang para bang feeling ko ano eh. He was so holy and I was so unholy. Parang ganoon. <laughs> <laughs> so parang parang nagiiinit yung katawa ko parang sa <laughs> <laughs> sabi ko, sabi ko parang parang yata iba yung feeling. Parang ito yata yung feeling ng impierno, parang ganun no. So oh because he was so holy, I mean, you know. So the the more he comes close to me, the, talagang ano, mas lalong nagiiinit yung pakiramdam ko. Sabi ko hindi ko alam kung anong gagawin ko. So I was so excited. No naman wala pang mga ano yun. Wala pang mga cellphone so I wasn't able to get a, a, any any shot. So finally, when he when he came to me, so, alam mo, hindi ko na, ano, hindi ko na pigilan yung sarili ko. I embraced him. I embraced him. And you wow. know what I said? Yeah, and you Tight know what hug? I said? Yeah, yeah, I really hugged him. And you know what I said? Sabi ko, ano, sa sarili ko, sa Tagalog, ha, magbabago na ako, magbabago na ako. Sabi ko, gano'n. Sabi ko, I'll, I'll change na, I'll change. Kasi alam ko naman, marami ako. Marami akong weakness. Ganun siya, I mean, ganun ang dating niya. Ang dating niya is, just his presence, just his holiness, just his aura, will is already enough for you to to challenge you to 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 uh, reform, to, to repent, reform, reform, you know, to change. And I really said that. Sabi ko sa sarili ko. Tapos panginoon, sabi ko magbabago na ako, magbabago na ako, magbabago na ako. Hindi nang schedule ah, magbabago na talaga ako. Ganon. So and then afterwards, uh, you know, uh, nag nag release na siya sa embrace. Wala naman siyang sinabi. So he just he just tapped, I think, my my back. And then afterwards, he went to the next one. And then, parang uh, parang stand ako, parang you know, di ko ano, ano ba nangyari na ba talaga to? Tatingiting nang ko parin siya. 
So I think that's if I if you're going to ask me what's his best ano his best uh, uh, parang attribute I think his yung yung holiness niya na na beaming na parang yung aura nandoon I think that's, that's what attracted me to him or you know made him made me ad- admire him so much so yun yung first encounter yung second encounter you want me to take to, to tell the second second encounter na Yes, of course. Yeah, the second encounter was when we were we were sent together with Father Henner, yung mga formators noon. We were sent to Rome for a formation formator seminar. Meron kaming one month seminar doon with Father Bon, Father uh, and Father uh, uh, Henner. So, tas iba pa. And then one of the one of the ano, one of the uh, yung schedule doon sa seminar is to meet the Pope sa audience. So we were yung Wednesday audience ay yung audience niya with ano sa nasa hall you remember that ganun yung sasalita siya tapos nandoon lahat you know we were placed dun sa ano sa harapan nandoon kami sa harapan wow yeah and so we listened to him kala namin ganun na lang you know what happened afterwards pagkatapos nung nung, nung talk niya pinakyat kami lahat and we were again lined up and once again ini say isa niya na no we were in, we were introduced as formators undergoing the seminar formation tapos so mga pang lima siguro ko pang anim somewhere in the middle ando na naman deja vu parang san carlos ano ando na naman siya sa unahan palapit na naman ng palapit sa akin and then i had you know the same feeling again to make the long story short no nayakap ko na naman siya alam mo ko ano sinabi ko ulit Talagang magbabago na ako ako. Sabi ko, talaga. Pero, pero I was able to talk to him. You know, he can speak in English. And then, uh, he asked my name. I mean, I was surprised. He asked my name. Sabi ko, I am Father Benny Tuasan. You know what surprised me? He he remembered me. You know why he remembered me? Because uh, in 1992, The 1994, the uh, the uh, um, the year before that, I represented him sa FAO International Conference dito sa Manila Hotel. It was done here, and I was with the with the uh, nuncio, and I was the ano, I was the ano yung uh, the expert, uh, the peritos ng nuncio, kasi the the ano the uh, the uh, topic was about agriculture. Uh, the nuncio asked then Cardinal Sin uh, who, who, who he can send as an expert. He was really asking for an expert. And then Cardinal Sin told, told, told the nuncio, no, I have a priest who is an expert in agriculture. And so he sent me. That's why I attended that international conference. But the international conference, and after that, I submitted a document uh, with regards to the GATT, G-A-T-T, if you remember that. And I submitted him personally to Pope John Paul II. And apparently, John, John Paul II was able to read, to read that. And as a result of that, he gave me a silver medallion. Yung, uh, wow! Yung medallion, yeah, personal yung medallion gift! Yun, yeah, he had a personal gift to me because of the representation, representation I had. But going back to that incident, you know, he remembered, your, your father, Benny, sabi niya, yes, uh, your, your, your holiness. Oh, you're the one who uh, sent me that uh, document with regards to God. Impressive, sabi niya. I, I was... I was um, uh, well uh, made aware of what happened in Vienna, and then he thanked me, and then and then he told me as a lesson, "Did you receive my gift to you?" And and then I did not remember the medallion, and then I told him honestly, "What gift? What gift your holiness?" Oh <laughs> <my God. laughs> the medallion. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I received. Thank you very much. And then after that, okay, thank you too. And then he went away. He went already. So I had a brief conversation with him. <laughs> that yeah, sounds like a very deep conversation. Hindi niya alam Yeah, hindi ko na. And you can I was so I was so amazed and you know, by his presence. Iba talaga eh. I mean, you know, parang hindi tao eh. No? Okay, so sa mga magre-regalo po kay Father Benny, wag na po kayong ma-offend kung hindi niya maalala ang niregaluhan niya kayo kasi <laughs> Ay maraming Batican. beses nangyayari 'yan pag Pasko. <laughs> yeah. Kasi ka na po yun. Wow, yeah. ganda naman po yun. So uh, you kept that all these years. And, yeah, I have. I have um, it. Uh, I have one from Pope uh, Benedict also because I also represented him in a, in a conference. So that's usually what they give, I think, when they when they do that, when you do that for them. So you, you're given a medallion. Kung pwede lang sana ibenta, pero... <laughs> oh my God, Father! 
Hindi, para dito. Pa, para sa poor. Yan. For the poor ba? For the poor. Anyway, sige. Yeah, that's it. Those are my two encounters. Wow. And Father Joel naman, what were yeah. your uh, encounters po with uh, St. Pope John Paul II? Ay, okay. So, good evening, Miss Margo, and good evening, my brother priest. Um, encounter with St. John Paul, dalawa rin eh, no? My first encounter was in 1995 during the World Youth Day, you know, when we went to San Pablo Seminary. I was third year theology then, no? Pero hindi pa close encounter yon dahil parang dumaan lang sa harap namin si Pope John Paul noon. Mga pari lang yata ang nakalapit sa kanya noon. Yeah. Si Father Kenny, pinalalayo kami noon, no? Sinaranga kami ni Father <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> binakuran. I second binakuran. demotion. Oh, <laughs> diba? Binakuran. <laughs> Father Benny, hindi pa ako nakaka-hope on experience na yun. Ha? <laughs> I second the motion, Father Joel. Oh. 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 Grabe naman yan. <laughs> During the seminary days, ganun lang po, dumaan lang sa harap namin, edi kawai-kawai. Hindi ko alam kung napansin niya ako na na. No? <laughs> Pero the second encounter was in, uh, ano na, uh, it, I think it was already 2001. Uh, I was a student priest in Rome. And then mm-hmm. I already finished my uh, studies after two years. And then nagkaroon kami ng personal audience with Pope John Paul II. Uh, I think it was June of 2001. So he met all the Filipino priests studying in Colegio Filipino. And then akala namin magbibigay lang siya ng speech, mag mag address Pero after the address, pinakila kami isa-isa. And then all of us had the chance to uh, talk to him personally. Naalala ko noon, uh, siguro yung mga, nung mga limang tao yung nasa harapan ko, nag, nag-rehearse na ako nung sasabihin ko eh. No? Sabihin ko. Meron na akong script. No? In Italian pa. In Italian, pinili ko pa yung classical Italian eh, para ma-impress eh. No? Pero pagdating ko doon, pagluhod ko, nung inabutan ako ng rosario, eh, hinahawakan, hinahawakan ko yung kamay eh. Wala na, katulad din ni Father Aris and Father Benny, parang time stands still eh. Parang, yun ba? Yung parang yun. Sa mga pelikula, yung parang, wow, wow, wow. Nagsasalita siya. <laughs> hindi mo may kinasabi niya. Parang slow motion, eh, no? Dahil you are in awe because of the, the, the aura of the, of the saintly Pope, no? So that was my second encounter with, with, with Pope uh, John Paul II. No? At least yung close encounter. Yeah, that's in 2000. And then after that po? Well, I, I, ano na, I went home na eh, after 2001. Eh. So, uh, dito na ako sa Pilipinas. So, yun lang yung close encounter ko with Pope John Paul II. Pero syempre, but when how, I was just... Yeah? How, how did you become po so... Um, kasi par- parang now, um, my impression is that you're the authority on um, documents, on St. Pope John Paul II. How, how did you become so... Um, uh, interested and and to master uh, his works. Ah, okay. the, actually, it began in uh, in the seminary when I was in theology. My masteral thesis was on priestly celibacy, and I I I uh, read about everything that John Paul II wrote about priestly celibacy. So that was my first encounter with his writings. No? At pag binabasa kay mga writings niya makikita mo eh, yung para bang nagre-reflect din yung personality ng tao eh. So, I became very uh, interested in some of his other works. And then when I became a student priest in Rome, doon ko pinag-aralan yung, yung, yung the teaching called Theology of the Body. That was my my licensed uh, thesis, also written by John Paul II. And then, actually, yung, during my personal audience, I gave him a copy of my thesis. Hindi ko, alam wow. kung, hindi ko alam kung nasa kanya pa yun. Ano? <laughs> Pero that's what wow. I did. So nasa ano siguro po yun? Nasa parang museum for Pope John Paul II? Hopefully, Was it type... Na sa jacket. <laughs> type written pa po? Type written? Hindi na ba? May computer na nun. <laughs> May computer na nun. Wala pang cellphone nun. Wala pang cellphone. <laughs> Okay po. So before we go to the encyclicals, um, Pope John Paul II, of course, is known 
um, for new evangelization. So let's ask for Father Jason because he's uh, director for the Office of the Promotion of New Evangelization. Um, and he was actually the one who chose Pope John Paul II to be the patron saint for Dominus S. So si Father Jason naman, wala kayong picture eh. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I represent inyo? those who did not have close encounters with the uh, Holy Father, with St. John Paul. <laughs> but, uh, would be very much affected by or uh, impacted by his uh, aura and charisma. So yung charism ni uh, Pope uh, John Paul, the St. John Paul, was not just if you are close uh, uh, to him uh, proximity-wise, but even if you are some kilometers away, yung sinasabi ni Father Aris kanina na even if you are in Taf or um, Padre Paura, you can still uh, feel no, the, the, the charisma of uh, John Paul. But with regard to new evangelization, of course, he started it all. Well, not the only one, but uh, uh, he primarily uh, started this uh, term, uh, new evangelization. And he called for uh, uh, new language, new fervor, uh, new methods when it comes to evangelization. So... We have chosen him as uh, our primary patron uh, for evangelization, new evangelization. And basically, it's about uh, proposing the faith in our world today, using the language and the culture of the people today. So very, uh, St. John Paul was very much into that, no? Pro uh, proclaiming the good news, preaching the good news that uh, young people especially uh, would understand. That's why he started the World Youth Day, because he wanted to connect with the young people. And so even to this day, we, we know that uh, St. John Paul is with us because of World Youth Day and uh, other uh, uh, activities for the whole church that he started. This afternoon, po, I actually chanced upon the message of Uh, Father, it's din po kami, Father, Father Joel. Opo. Just briefly po, like, um, what, uh, because I remember that you said that um, St. Pope, Saint, Saint Pope John Paul II is not only um, the patron for evangelization, but also patron for the youth. So to, to yeah. the youth audience who are watching po. Yeah, kasi si Pope John Paul II, um, he, he is known not only as the Pope of the family, he is also known as the Pope for young people. I don't know, in, uh, in the year 1983, I think there was a, a call to gather young people in Rome uh, for a certain event. And they were only expecting, siguro mga six to 10,000 people to come to Rome. Pero during that time, there were 30,000 young people who came to Rome. Now, nung makita daw ni John Paul II ito, nagkaroon siya ng ideas. Sabi niya, why don't we do this an annual thing, uh, he discovered that when you challenge young people, when you call on young people, sabi nila, sabi niya, young people will respond. They will respond to the call. So Easter Sunday of 1984, he called for the young people again to assemble in St. Peter's. And then sabi nila, oh, this time we will prepare for 60,000. Pero lo and behold, 300,000 young people came. And during that time, sabi ni Jean Paul II, ah, this is it. I will now institute what we will call a World Youth Day. So kaya in 1985, the, the, the first official international World Youth Day gathering, and it was uh, held in uh, Buenos Aires. So si Pope Jean Paul ang originator ng World, uh, ng world Youth Day. Um, when he was a cardinal, he would usually gather young people uh, around the campfire. They would do uh, hiking. And whenever they would do hiking around the campfire, nag nagtuturo siya sa mga, mga bata. No? He would teach them about love. He would take, teach them about family. So kung ano man yung mga experiences nila. So young, uh, John Paul II was really close uh, to, the, to, 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 to the young people, to the youth. Ang dami po niyang na-establish, parang um, aside from, because so recently, so of course, I mean, we remember him for World Youth Day and it was such a big celebration here. Um, I just 
was it just last night or two nights ago that there was an interreligious um, peace um, gathering of leaders in in uh, organized by the San Egidio in in Rome and uh, as I was reading up on it I realized that um, this was something that was also started by Pope John Paul yeah the Pope the Pope um, a gathering uh, a people of different religions and yeah. um, really promoting ecumenism. Could um, could any of our father priests enlighten us po on the advocacy for um, uh, reaching out to different faiths of um, unity among faiths uh, of Pope John Paul? Uh, Miss Margo, usually, ano naman yan eh, parang, I think it's an annual thing that Pope John Paul II also did during his papacy. Uh, he would usually gather uh, religious leaders from different faiths and denominations. They would uh, gather usually in Assisi, and then they would hold an ecumenical prayer service. Uh, now, bakit sa Assisi? Kasi St. Francis, kilala siya as someone who reached out to the Muslims. Si St. Francis, mahal yan ng mga Muslim eh, dahil uh, during his time, natawin sila ng close encounter with the, with the Muslims. Kaya ang tawag kay Francis noon, brother of the universe. Kaya itong gathering na ito, yung ecumenical gathering na ito, they would usually do it in a city. And uh, Pope John Paul was the one who originated that. And I, I, um, I remember, yeah, Miss Margo, go ahead. Yes po. Di ba po parang aside from the Muslims, like he also reached out to the Jews, and yes. um, parang he was also the first one po, di ba, who went to Syria. Uh, yeah. He was the first one then na nakita with the Wailing Wall. Tama po ba? Yeah. Siya yung unang papa na yung nagdasa sa Wailing Wall. Kitang-kita nung nag-iwan pa siya ng piece of paper eh. Doon sa Wailing Wall. And then he, he made a sign of the cross. No? So maganda yung image niya yung kitang-kita talaga sa television. Nag-iwan no, he, po siya sa Wailing Wall. <laughs> Yeah. Mah- mahilig po pala siya mag-iwan kung saan-saan. Kasi po, di ba sa Fatima, <laughs> nag-iwan din siya ng bullet dun sa crown? <laughs> Oo. Uh-huh. That was the bullet na tumama sa kanya noon. Opo. Oo. Kasi he believed that the Virgin Mother saved him from that assassination attempt. Kaya nung yes. mag-iwan yun, yun, nilagay niya sa crown of Our Lady of Fatima. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, speaking of Fatima, we also very much uh, have um, St. Pope John Paul II to thank for um, strengthening our devotion to Mama Mary. Mm-hmm. Diba po? Uh, and diba po yung Divine Mercy, siya din po ba with um, St. Faustina? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, maybe maybe po Father Aris can enlighten us on that. And also, how, marami po, dinumog po ba yung simbahan ninyo today kahit na may pandemic for the patrons of St. Pope John Paul? You know, marami sa mga parish churches namin ngayon, walang tao. Pero kami, we have had many, many people. Uh, last Sunday uh, was our parish fiesta and today, uh, ang dami-daming tao. So we had we were very careful to maintain distancing. You were asking about uh, the Pope and the Blessed Mother. Um, yes, Pope. You know, yung kanyang coat of arms, very significant. Kasi yung coat of arms niya had only one symbol, just the M. M for Mary. And uh, when, when he was elected Pope in October 16, 1978, Um, he entrusted his papacy to the Blessed Mother and took on the motto, Totus Tuus, meaning I am all yours, Mary. So he really offered everything and placed everything in the hands of the Blessed Mother. Very Marian, very, very Marian si, si Pope John Paul II. And um, parang there was also a time when he visited, um, oh, when he, when he visited Fatima and left the bullet of, the, of his assassin, um, mm-hmm. di ba po he also had a chance to meet one of the children? Yeah, because take note, um, he was here. He was here in February 1981. He got shot May 13, 1981. Yes. 
Oh. And uh, oh. so that was the Feast of Our Lady. So after he recovered, he went to Fatima and offered the bullet. Surprisingly, I don't know, and people keep saying they don't know what ha how it happened, but there was a place in the crown of Our Lady of Fatima <coughs> for the bullet. Kasha. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. There was a place. There was a place. Parang, kasi sabi mo, sa mo ilalagay yun doon. No? Uh, but that was his way of of thanking the Blessed Mother for saving his life. Because the doctors were really saying, kung, kung, kung napalihis lang ng konti yeah. yung bala, that would have been a fatal one. Um, yes. Another yeah. anecdote there is that um, uh, John Paul II is a devotee of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And uh, he wears the brown scapular of Our Lady. And uh, before, before, before the anesthesia, he asked his doctor if it is possible not to remove his scapular during the surgery. So many, wow. so, so many anecdotes to show how close, how close John Paul fell to the Blessed Mother. And um, I remember, I think in well, uh, I'm I'm a I'm a child of uh, Saint Alphonsus and Father Benny used to be our parish priest. <laughs> So, um, Father Ben, because I remember that time, you gave me the Divine Mercy. Dun. So, I was wondering if um, maybe you could, maybe you could enlighten us. <laughs> Ang hirap. <laughs> ba baka po you could uh, uh, enlighten us on that then. Ano po ba yung practice na yun? Kasi um, um, related din po siya kay Pope John Paul po, di ba? Well, Hala? actually, it was, it was not me. It was uh, a, a parishioner, a member na uh, ano eh. Siyang nag-introduce noon. Di ba yung pag, ano, pag tarasang ano, Holy Week, di ba? Uh, it's, uh, it's a Sunday or... Uh, sometime in Holy Week, the Gumpis and devotions of Divine Mercy. That was the time when it was put there for the first time. And then, yeah, that's how I came to know that you know, uh, it's something that's being propagated. And uh, mercy, Divine Mercy is uh, uh, it's a, uh, an image that the Pope you know, would, uh, uh, would use you know, in order to um, attract people to reconciliation. Because one of his forte, palagi natin pinag-usapan, kanina pa natin pinag-usapan nga yung ecumenism, ano? yung, uh, he would always reach out to Jews, to Judaism, Islam, and even Eastern Orthodox. I witnessed that when I was in Rome, uh, nung, ano nga, nung nag, uh, nagsiseminar kami, I attended one of his masses. Nandun mismo yung head ng Eastern Orthodox. And I was surprised. Uh, sabi ko, ba bakit uh, nandito ito? So, there was a uh, kind of a ceremony there, and then uh, yung, uh, the, the theme was uh, trying to reach out you know, to people of other faith. And I think it's not only about religion, but of every, every, um, every race. No? Kasi kahit sa Poland, di ba? he was known to have been instrumental in uh, ending communism ending in communism. Poland. Uh, di ba? Yan yung isang, ano niya, isang attribute niya when he was still in Poland. So I think it is in his, you know, in his system that he wanted man to be united. No? And I think uh, the Divine Mercy can also be uh, mentioned there in the sense that uh, the Divine Mercy is a, uh, an agent of uni unity you know, for all men, especially for those you know, who believe in Jesus. And um, what about St. Faustina? Parang we see, can't see... I... Every time we mention St. Pope John Paul II, parang naka-attach po pa natin si St. Faustina. <laughs> I, I, wala! <laughs> maybe St. Saint, maybe Saint Joel. Maybe really, Father Joel yeah. can enlighten us more Joel, on that. Father, I'm not really angry uh, with the, no, their relationship. Well, yeah. well, first of all, St. Faustina is also from Poland. No? So talagang magkababayan sila. Kaya kilala ni John Paul II si Sister Faustina. Pero uh, John Paul II, um, I, I remember, I think, when, when Sister Faustina was having mga visions, John Paul II was already aware of the visions that Sister Faustina was having. No? 
Kaya, oh. it find that we've taken he was the one who canonized Sister Faustina, di ba? And um, he was the one also who um, made it uh, official that the second Sunday of Easter will become yeah, the, uh, the Divine Mercy Sunday. So, mm. Jango II um, made that an official day for Divine Mercy. And interestingly, Jango II also died on the second Sunday of Easter on the Feast of the Divine Mercy. Wow! So, wow! And was, and was canonized on Divine Mercy Sunday. Yes. Wow. Trivia. Yeah. Uh -oh. Trivia. Yeah. So, wow. ganun yun. Okay. Close connection. And John Paul II believed also in, uh, in, in the mercy of God. Uh, yes. Kaya nga, one of his encyclical is about the mercy of God. Ang uh, title nun is uh, um, Dives in Misericordia, Rich in Mercy. So that is where John Paul II developed his theology of mercy. He, he was talking about the mercy of God in that institution. The and, best and, in the world, yeah. And dami ko pong homework, 14 encyclicals po yun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and they're all, they all good, huh? the, the, mm -hmm. the encyclicals of, uh, no, grabe. Well, I was uh, first year for Mators, San Carlos, when Veritate Splendor came out. And it was... Mm -hmm. uh, it was Father Arevalo who gave us uh, the uh, substance of that. Very, it's just a very beautiful and uh, encyclical. But maybe relevant now also would would also be Redemptorist Missio. Sa kanya po ba yun? Redemptorist Missio. Because it's World Mission Month. We just had a special po kasi for World yeah. Mission Sunday. Uh, last Sunday. Um, yeah. So, um. Uh, Father Joel is also Professor of Moral Theology in San Carlos Graduate School of Theology and is the Commissioner of, um, of the Commission on Family and Life. So, Para al alam ko rin yung tanong ah. <laughs> Get ready, Joel. <laughs> so maybe we could be enlightened po on the um, encyclicals. Of uh, Pope John Paul II on, on the marriage. <laughs> Maraming sinula si Pope John Paul about marriage. No, uh, una una uh, he wrote an well not really an encyclical. He wrote an apostolic exhortation. Yes, yes. It is called Familiaris Consortio. Consortio. It is the role the role of the modern family in the in the uh, the role of the. Sabi niya, the future of humanity passes by way of the family. Dahil para sa kanya, di ba, the family is the basic unit of society. Basic. At naniniwala si John Paul na kapag buo ang pamilya, buo din ang mundo. Kaya in Familiaris Consortium, that is what he developed. He encouraged the families to really fulfill the vocation and mission to the world. To become a sacrament of God here in the world. Magandang point dun sa Familiaris Consortio, sabi niya marriage is a sacrament. Pero anong ibig sabihin ng sacrament? Di ba meron tayong pitong sacramento? Uh, lagi natin sinasabi, no, pag tayo ay binigyan, we receive a sacrament, we receive baptism, we receive the Eucharist, we receive uh, the anointing. Pero kay John Paul II, sabi niya, when a man and a woman gets married, they do not receive a sacrament they become a sacrament, the sacrament of God in the world. At yun yung premise ng Familiaris Consortio, that the man and the woman in their marriage is the presence of God in the world. They are supposed to be the sacrament of God in the world. Kaya yun yung ano, no? he wanted to be known as the Pope of the family. Yeah, no? And then, pag buhay naman ang pinag-uusapan, he also wrote an encyclical called Evangelium Vitae. The gospel of life. Ado naman ang, ang mga ang mga dinedevelop niya ay yung mga yung mga the threats against the culture of life, no? Uh, uh, the culture of life versus the culture of death. And then ang sabi niya as uh, believers in Christ, all of us are agents and proclaimers of the gospel of life. At doon na na identify yung tinatawag natin yung acronym ng death. 
uh, which is part of the, the the culture of death. Ano ba yung yung after ni Mayon? Yung D ay um ayun, divorce. Yung E is uh kalimutan ko yung E, yung A is abortion. Abortion. Yung e is, e, 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 is euthanasia. Uh, yeah, euthanasia and then abortion. And then yung T is total population control. So, then yung H is uh, homosexual union. Homosexuality. So yun yung parang tinatawag na death, yung culture of death, of death. Uh, to be the culture of life. Yun ang dinevelop niya in Evangelion video. Pero we need wow. an art class kung ano laman nun. Sige na, Margo, you ask the question na. <laughs> um, kasi po na pag-usapan namin that we're going to wait first for the official word from the Vatican. Of course. Kasi apparently, um, meron pong, it's an Italian, um, the translation might still be a little uh, questionable. So until we get word, um, we have to behave. Spanish is original. Spanish Mm-hmm. Yes. So, official word. Tama, tama. Yes, tama. A... I, I agree. I agree. Actually, <laughs> marami yan ang sinasabi kasi a lot already jump into it eh, and you know, they're so excited about it, no? And tama. Ako, uh, I would uh, I would agree with that. Let's wait, no. May rin pang oriente, di ba? Yeah. Yes po. Yes po. Yeah, That's and simple. and, and... in passing lang ah. naman yung interview kaya lang yeah. lahat po rin ang tinatanong ngayon eh. <laughs> yes, kasi right, Pope Francis. I'm... Of all of all people, Pope Francis <laughs> well, And during the feast day of St. John Paul. Yeah. <laughs> John Paul II. <laughs> My goodness, talaga grabe ah. Yeah, and I feel so bad kasi natabunan yung sobrang gandang interreligious um, prayer Tama. meeting that they had. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, right. as a political, uh, sorry, as a communications uh, strategist, like I was like, oh my God, this is like a PR nightmare for, for the Vatican right now. But I'm sure they'll get over it. So, uh, in in God's time. <laughs> so, I'm sure we'll, we'll hear from, from um, the Vatican soon enough. Um, yeah. But we only have a few minutes left and uh, we sadly have to wrap up. I think we'll need a whole other in-depth session just on those encyclicals. Um, yeah, maybe, because Pope, maybe... Pope John Paul was Pope for 27 years, Margot. And <laughs> we cannot contain that in uh, an hour or so, no? Kaya, <laughs> yeah, he's so rich. Kung gusto mong aralin, we have to... Um, I yeah, spent much, much time, many, many hours to really understand uh, St. John Paul. Yes. And of course, maybe we can also start by reading the book, Catechism of the Catholic Church. Oh, my copy ako. Ay, naka virtual pala. <laughs> <laughs> so, very, very important document we also have to thank him for. So, siguro po, as we end, um, maybe each one could give uh, what, what greatest lesson from St. Pope John Paul, the great... Uh, did you uh, have, have you taken and keep in your heart? Oh, we'll start yeah. with Father Benny by age. <laughs> wow. Well, <laughs> well, uh, actually, na nabanggit na part ni, ni Father Joel. Uh, this has always been my ano part of my homily pagka wedding. No, that uh, although couples no uh, they have a uh, a purpose of their own. No, usually may kanya kanya purpose, but. I always remind them that they have a purpose coming from God. And that purpose, as what Father Joel had said, is that they are the sacrament. And what are they sacrament of God? They are the sacrament of God's love to us and our love to God. So, yung, yung mag-asawa, hindi lang sila para sa kanilang sarili, kundi sila ay tumata yung saksi sa pagmamahal ng Diyos. And that's all over actually in the right of, the, uh, in the right of marriage. Nandun yun. And that I owe to John Paul II and reading him. Dun ako ako sa kanya and, and I think it has been effective to so many couples no, na uh, nakakarinig nung ganong reality, reality and truth about the, the marriage. That it's not just about them, that it's also, they're also working or living as witnesses to God's love. You are the sacrament. O si Father Aris po? Yeah. Uh, during these days of the pandemic, um, I find it 
very meaningful to always go back to the words of uh, John Paul II, be not afraid. Mm -hmm. I think uh, so many people are afraid these days of so many things. People are afraid of, of getting sick. People are, getting, are afraid of getting the, the virus. People are afraid of losing their jobs. People are afraid because they don't know what will happen. No, if this will take too long, people, we really don't know what will happen. And amidst all of these concerns, the words of John Paul II uh, yeah. remind us of something very important. Be not afraid. Yeah. Be not afraid. Also, we have to remember that. I'll, I'll start to sing it. <laughs> so, and and uh, finally, our moral theologist. Uh, are you ready to answer the controversial question? Of, oh, no, just kidding. So, <laughs> so uh, Father Joel, on yes. marriage and family life. <laughs> so, the final word to na lang yung, um, when John Paul II was elected as Pope, ang unang message niya, sabi niya, Open wide the doors to Christ. Buksan daw natin yung pintuan ng ating kalooban kay Kristo. Ang sinasabi ni John Paul II dito, do not be afraid to say yes to God. Because when we say yes to God, the more we become who we are and the more we become who we are called to be. So I would re-echo what John Paul II said. Open wide the doors of your life to Christ. Wow, open wide wow. the doors of your life to Christ. Nako, Father Ben, tatandaan ko yan, baka mahanap ko ng purpose ko. <laughs> okay, and of course... Good luck. <laughs> and of course, uh, Father Jason will uh, wrap it all up and uh, yeah. <laughs> have the final word. Yeah, I wish we would we could have... Uh, Four hours, five hours with our <laughs> with our guests, no? Uh, Festival. Yeah, Saint John Paul is just really an amazing, an amazing not just a pope but uh, an amazing human being, no? Who taught us so much, and that is why we owe so much to him. Uh, supposedly, fathers, this year, no centenary, dapat did Saint John Paul. He was born. Years. Uh, yeah, one hundred years, years, no? Years, years, no? Would have been one hundred years, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so kung buhay siya ngayon, 100 years old siya ngayon, no? 1920 yan. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. we would like to thank you, fathers, for uh, uh, being with us in uh, Dominus S. Ako, for me, yung uh, something so significant uh, about St. John Paul for me is when he went back to Poland, yung sinasabi ni Father Aris kanina na when he went back to Poland, doon niya binanggit yung new evangelization eh. Doon niya unang uh, sinabi yung new, uh, new language, new methods, new fervor. And uh, in fact, when he went back to Poland, uh, the people were, were di ba, shouting, we want God. Yun yung, yun yung what was so amazing about the visit of John Paul going back to his homeland, uh, communist country, and then everybody shouting, we want God. And exactly, that's what St. John Paul gave us. We just gave him... Uh, the beautiful face of God no? in, in his speeches, in his homilies, in his writings, in his whole being, in his totus tuus, he was actually the beautiful face of God for the people today. Yeah, so thank you very much, Father Joel, Father Aris, and uh, yeah, Father Benny. Hindi namin makalimutan yung Father Joel, ha? Ang visit ni <laughs> Basta hindi. Sigaw na lang kayo. We love you, JP2. Yeah. Hinarapan ko sila. Together, we will say. We love, we love you. love you, JP2. JP2. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much, everyone. And thanks, everyone, for watching. And happy Feast of Saints, John Paul John II. Paul II. Okay. Happy Feast Day. Happy Feast Day. Happy Feast Day. Happy Feast Day. Happy Feast Day.